troublesome cultural heritage on the move. Um, metal detecting finds derived from the plough soil are both physically and more metaphorically on the move. Um, and it's the latter that will be the focus of my presentation today, as perceptions of the usefulness of metal detecting finds is shifting in Norway. The handling of finds from private metal detecting has been primarily seen as one of the more troublesome tasks assigned to cultural heritage management. But slowly, private metal detecting is also being seen um, as a fruitful approach to filling some of the gaps that traditional archaeological excavation methods, to some extent, are missing out on. And I will, to illustrate this shift, or move of opinions, uh, present two debates about metal detecting, one from the uh, early 90s and one fairly recent one, and then um, share some of the perceptions of metal detecting that the research participants in my study have given to me. Um, and the preliminary results that I'm presenting are from my ongoing PhD project, where I make use of complementary methods, such as distribution analysis of metal detecting finds and qualitative interviews of both archaeologists and metal detectorists. Now, um, tracing the very first use of metal detectors uh, amongst both archaeologists and the public is surprisingly difficult. During interviews um, and slightly more informal settings, it has been mentioned that many archaeologists have underreported both their own um, and private use of metal detectors in an effort to draw as little attention to it as possible. The belief was that any news or public information about metal detecting would only create more interest in the hobby, and that was sort of slightly frowned upon, at least um, back in the day. Now, the metal detector itself first made, made headlines for its uh, versatility in a post-war world. And Norwegian newspapers published several shorter articles um, about its use in England uh, in the late 1940s. Um, I don't know how many of you are sort of Scandinavian speaking, maybe just me. <laughs> but um, so on the side with a the cow, they see one of the articles where um, the metal detector is used by veterinarians um, to locate shrapnel inside cows. Uh, while, meanwhile, in Norway, uh, the, mi the mine detector was used to find a metal piece that had gotten lost in a pack of margarine. That was sort of um, the extent of the use of the metal detector. And it took close to a decade before metal detectors were being used um, to search actively for anything else than modern metal, um, and at least in a fashion that sort of reached the public. Um, and metal detecting, curiously, in England kept making headlines in Norway. So news about both successful um, treasure hunts and tensions between archaeologists and detectorists were reported about quite frequently. Um, and it wasn't until the late 1970s um, that interviews with um, Norwegian hobbyist metal detectorists were um, published. And I will just mention that there is a discrepancy between those reports and what I see in the find database. So the, the numbers don't quite match up. So some, some reports and finds are sort of missing on both sides of that. Right, so the very first sort of public account of any debate about the private use of metal detecting finds I have managed to find so far was published in an archaeological student journal, Nikolai, in 19... 92, two then archaeology students wrote a scathing comment on how a cooperation between metal detectorists and archaeologists had been portrayed in the media, stating that um, uh, dissemination uh, is all well and good. Archaeologist Paddy Olsen at the Museum of Cultural History has been an on an archaeological survey together with the Norwegian Metal Detecting Society and Aftenposten newspaper. The result was two subpar articles in a newspaper where the archaeologists were standing with tears of pure joy in their eyes over the sensational finds. One should know what one wants to disseminate before one contacts journalists. Um, six replies were written, one by the representative for the metal detectorists that participated, 
uh, and another no less scathing than the initial comment by the named archaeologist, Harry Olsen. And he uh, replied, Harbi and Ulebank, so that's the initial authors, uh, which themselves have frequently been portrayed with varying degrees of success in mass media, should know that the archaeologist does not control the journalist's pen, the journalist and editor's pen. And he went on to state that uh, the journalist's use of the words such as treasure hunting, treasure rush, gold hunt, only livens up the text. So he's very pro um, to that. Now, this debate um, is not only one of the earliest ones I've been able to find, it's also one of the very few that still exist from before social media platforms started replacing web pages and other online forums. And I, I do suspect that there's about a decade worth of communication um, that is just gone, basically. And I guess that's the case for more countries than, than just Norway. And today, uh, Facebook has become a place where much of the knowledge exchange and public debate about archaeology, and as a result, metal detecting in Norway is taking place. This isn't a conscious, conscious choice by any of the country's archaeological institutions, and it has happened uh, gradually without any sort of critical debate. And the public Facebook group, Archaeology in Norway, is now the largest forum for archaeologists and non-archaeologists in the country, with more, more, a bit more than 4,400 members. And it is administered solely by one individual, and as I'm sure you can imagine, a recurring uh, topic uh, since the group's creation is the private use of metal detectors uh, to search for protected cultural heritage. Um, and if any of you have tried to use the search function in a group in Facebook, you'll know it's horrendous. But <laughs> if you do that in that group uh, and writing different versions of uh, metal detecting uh, does yield um, a large number of posts with very long threads underneath them. Now, uh, the debate that you can see there in the fractions, while local, um, I think will be familiar to many archaeologists across the world and, and certainly to archaeologists in the UK, I think. Although it's some sort of national nuances caused by variations in laws aimed at protecting cultural heritage. And the active participants are metal detectorists and archaeologists. Um, and they have been sort of the main participants and, and instigators of the discussion with, with both sides, I'd say, wearing um, towards polemics. Now, in the summer of 2017, the news about legal metal, metal detecting at an ongoing archaeological excavation in the southern part of Norway was nationally broadcast via sort of the equivalent of, of BBC, both on TV, radio, and, and on the website. And that's the um, news article from, from um, the online one that you can see there. The excavation leader was interviewed, uh, along with the county conservator, which describes the incident, and stated that a police report had been filed. Now, right before 7 a.m. Uh, on October the 11th, the news article was shared in this Facebook group, Archaeology in Norway with um, the caption, a metal detector has been used to search at our excavation site in Kristiansam. The police are now involved and we are hoping to receive tips that can contribute to solving the case. Um, the post immediately attracted attention and in the end it had 47 comments and it was shared 15 times and 145 people had um, reacted to it in any in, in a sort of way. Now, instead of tips, the debate very quickly became about whether the evidence that the archaeologists had presented held up to scrutiny. Um, and several people argued that the published photographs, uh, <laughs> and this is from the news report, uh, that they depict that the holes had been dug overnight and they were described by some as traces of metal detecting activity. Um, some claimed that they were more likely the result of uh, badgers searching for earthworms. And some, uh, quite a few, questioned the archaeologists' ability to differentiate between animal and human activity uh, and demanded better proof to be presented. If not, they claimed, the metal detecting community was owed a, uh, an official apology. 
and even they even posted photos of a uh, known badger holes as a, as a comparison. Um, and the photos were followed by uh, comments mocking those who thought that the disturbances pictured in the news article um, could be anything else than animal mate. Now, five hours after the original post, the project manager for the excavation project posted a longer explanation, including details um, about uh, of the disturbances at the site had not made it into the news article. Comments were still published for another 24 hours and did not stop until a third warning to end the discussion was issued by the group administrator. Now, although this debate is, I say, fairly typical, some of the online communication between archaeologists and metal detectorists, um, debates do seem to be less frequent than they used to be, and perhaps continuous communication even though uh, quite harsh and polemic, has actually had a positive effect on the metal texturist impression of archaeologists and vice versa. Um, and after all, um, we do share a passion for old stuff. Striking up a friendship shouldn't be impossible. Metal objects from the plough soil are seen as direct links past societies by some, and at a time and cost consuming nuisance with little scientific value by others. But sort of the division between the groups isn't as straightforward as one might think. And the former view is uh, reflected in a quote from one of my research participants. It's some of the same stuff that drives us, detectorists and archaeologists. If you'd let loose a film crew on archaeologists in the field, you'd see the exact same wild enthusiasm over the object all the way down to that little microlith, which gets his own logic in that context. If you're on an excavation and you know that that particular object can tell you something that you didn't know before you found it. And this was made, this was stated by an archaeologist. The person does point out that even though most archaeologists in Norway are trained to value the context of the find above the find itself, um, shared enthusiasm over singular finds regardless of fine context, frequently take place during an excavation project. And many of the people I've spoken to express some of the same sentiments. So why do some of us continue to uh, so aggressively disagree? I think a large reason for much frustration and debate for archeologists and uh, metal detectorists alike is the time it takes to register catalogue and especially preserve metal objects in very varying conditions and the enormous cost of it. Funding for this mandatory task in Norway is taken from the base budget for the country's archaeological museum. Um, the Museum of Cultural History in Oslo, where I'm from, estimates an average of three and a half working days to fully include a find into the collection. Some take less, some take more. Um, and there's an average of approximately uh, 1,600 finds uh, handed into the museum each year now. And we have one person uh, responsible uh, for taking care of all the finds. So as I'm sure you can imagine, there's quite a huge lag. Uh, there's a huge backlog on find registering and reporting back to the metal detectorists. So as a result, it takes years before metal detectorists get any information about their finds. So many archaeologists feel that detective finds take valuable resources from other also mandatory tasks. And detectorists are upset because they feel that their effort to contribute to Norway's collection of cultural heritage is not appreciated. But I'll let a quote from one of the archaeologists I interviewed um, both finish off the presentation and provide a sort of rebuttal to that idea. I think that metal detecting gives a completely different fine picture than one has had before. The number of Bronze Age axes has exploded. They used to be very, very rare. Now we have one in every county, once a year almost. So what we get is completely different things from what was found before. Because people look in places we maybe didn't think to look before, which don't have good context. So the proper stray finds. For diversity, metal detecting has been very important. Thank you.